Welcome back to another exciting episode of Plastic Thoughts. Um, today I am your host or your guest, your host and your guest, whatever you want to call it. My name is Crystal Ambrose and I am the founder and director of the nonprofit organization Bahamas Plastic Movement. And Bahamas Plastic Movement, we're an environmental nonprofit organization geared towards raising awareness and finding solutions to plastic pollution, um, not only in the Bahamas, but globally as well. Um, before I share my plastic thoughts, I just want to give a special shout out to Nicholas DeMarco, who is holding it down for that Plastic Warrior crew. Um, he's a youth leader, and he's given so many different people a platform to share their views uh, and their thoughts on plastic. Um, I'm from the Bahamas of all places, but you would not know that because I am in this drab room with this very stale background. Um, so in a perfect world, I would be on a beach showing you how I really feel about plastic because it's everywhere on every beach that you go to on the in the Bahamas, you find plastic there. Um, but right now I am in an office in the middle of Canada. Um, so I can't get to a beach. So what I'm going to do today is tell you how I feel about plastic and plastic pollution. So I'll talk a little bit about um, plastic itself and how I feel about the product. I'll share a little bit about the emotions that I feel when we talk about plastic pollution and finding solutions to this vast issue. And then I'm going to talk about approaches to solutions that I've enacted in the Bahamas with the amazing students that I work with all across the world. Um, so let's get started. Plastic. Goodness. I'm going to be very candid here. Um, plastic is still a big part of my life. Plastic is a gift and a curse. It's a great product. Um depending on what it's used for. It's lightweight, it's durable, it lasts for a long time. Um, and the same things that make it such a great product make it such a huge detriment to the environment. Plastic is obviously good for medical purposes. Um, I wear glasses and you know my glasses are made from plastic. Um, Plastic also is used to create things that we use every day, especially in this age of technology, um, research equipment, um, furniture, uh, dishware, like you name it, laptops, cell phones, computers, all made from plastic. But when we look at the plastic that's most used most frequently, like the single use plastic items, things like your plastic bags, your straws, your water bottles, um, your coffee cups, styrofoam you know these things have significant health risk to human health to our the health of our oceans to marine life it's just crazy and um a lot of these products these single-use products they're obsolete for the most part we don't need plastic straws we don't need plastic bags there are enough alternatives um that are sustainable um that are more economic that we can be switching to and that we can be using and that are also more beneficial for our environment especially our oceans um so when i think about plastic pollution i kind of get a headache tbh as my students say <laughs> to be honest like it's so overwhelming it's just so much and I, we live in this day of an age of this is the age of information, right? There's so much information that's coming at you so hard and so fast and it's all so negative and it's all so, um, so overwhelming. Every single day there's a new publication, a new article about how bad plastic is, how it's affecting human health, how it's affecting um, our marine environment. You know, and these stories, this information is really important, but it's become to a point where people are so desensitized to it that they disconnect. Before I even began filming this, a new article just came out like a few hours ago. Well, to me, at least I just saw it that deep sea, um, deep sea organisms in the ocean have plastic in their stomachs. And, you know, it's like no ecosystem is safe. Plastic is literally everywhere. It's in our tap waters. 83% of tap water tested all around the world had plastic microfibers. And it's like, oh my God, like what, what do you do? What can I do to stop this? 
Um, and that's where it gets hard. And that's where it gets really overwhelming. Because oftentimes when I think about pla oftentimes when I think about plastic, I feel like I'm not doing enough. You know, what impact am I really making? You know, plastic is still a part of my life um, in terms of when I shop. Like a lot of food that I purchase comes in plastic and it drives me insane. Um, but there's so many other ways that I cut down on plastic um, by refusing to use single use items. Like I'm really adamant about it uh, whenever I go to the store or anywhere, I always have my uh, reusable shopping bags with me whenever I'm at a restaurant. I'm always about the no straw. Um, no straw, no straw, no straw. Uh, shameless plug, it's also no straw November. So if you see this, even if it's not November, say no plastic straw, please, when you dine out. Um, so I kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, but basically plastic is still, um, a big part of everyone's lives and there's so much that we can do to reduce it. So when I get overwhelmed, um, when I think about this issue and everything that's so bad, you know, sometimes you feel so hopeless that there's never going to be a real solution to this issue. I stop and I reflect on my own life and I think about what I can do. And I always think about this, this story that a friend of mine told me about this hummingbird, um, I think it's a African, it's like an African story. Um, but there's this hummingbird that was in the wilderness. Okay, I'm just going to pause and not. So there was this um, African wives tale about this hummingbird that was in the forest um, or somewhere in some environment. And basically the forest was burning down and there were all of these animals surrounded around this uh, watering hole and the hummingbird was filling her mouth or her beak with water and she was flying over to the fire and just dropping little bits of spit to try and out the fire. So a buffalo was like, what are you doing? You're never going to out that fire. You're crazy. You know, so the hummingbird said, I'm doing the best that I can. And when I think about how big and how crazy and how scary this whole plastic issue is, I remind myself that I have to do the best that I can and a little bit goes a long way. That I have to just keep swimming and that I'm not the only one swimming um, in our oceans to fight this, to fight this horrible issue. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on plastic itself. When I think about solutions... This is where it gets tricky too, right? Because oftentimes we propose solutions and we forget to take into account social factors, cultural factors, accessibility factors that make implementing solutions in different places viable. You know, what works for one country may not work for the other and vice versa from person to person. Um, so it makes living zero waste very hard. It makes waste management a little bit harder because... A lot of things are not put in place to lead these particular lifestyles. Also, when we think about certain products that we use, um, for example, I mentioned that I live in Canada. I am not the most, how do I say, um, wealthy person, you know, that one may know. So I've been fortunate enough to get a lot of donations, um, especially when I've moved to colder climate places. Uh, like here in Canada, that people give me gifts, like old clothes that I gladly accept. Some of them being fleece, you know? And when the whole microfibers issue came about, I'm like, oh, what do I do? I can't afford a crazy expensive jacket. I don't know what to do. Do I just not get any donations? Do But fleece keeps me warm. Like, what am I supposed to do? So I felt helpless. Um, I actually don't have any fleece coats anymore. <laughs> So maybe that, that did help. Um, but that was just one instance where I felt like completely helpless. Like I didn't know what to do. So when I think about, you know, the story of the hummingbird um, doing their best, you know, I think about so many other people that, that do their best um, to try and fight this issue. Um, in the Bahamas, our approach to solutions, it's a little bit more unique. Um, at the Bahamas Plastic Movement, 
we use youth as the focal point of our organization to drive home the message of plastic pollution reduction. Um, every summer we have a summer camp called the Plastic Pollution Education and Ocean Conservation Camp where students from all across the island of Eleuthera and also other Bahamian islands come together um, to learn about this issue and to learn ways that they can use their voice um, and their own personal actions to make a difference. Um, so we're doing scientific research with the students in regard to plastic pollution. Um, they're out on the beaches quantifying how much plastic is out there, but more importantly, they're in the community, they're at the businesses, um, they're working on policy um, to affect change around plastic pollution. Um, and that's the thing what makes me really hopeful in terms of finding solutions to plastic pollution, because I think about my partners in this and who has a seat at the table and who can help me really drive forward, forward change. And when I think about those um, change makers, I think youth, you know, youth are really powerful. You know, they're well connected. Um, they have so many great ideas. And when youth speak, the world listens. And I absolutely love working with students, love working with youth because they are the only thing that keeps me going. Um, with this plastic topic. You know, some days I'm, I'm so down, I'll read an article and I'm like, oh gosh, it just never ends. And then I get a text or a call or some student would come up to me and they'll be like, Miss Crystal, I have an idea. This is what we can do to stop plastic pollution. And all of a sudden I'm like, yes, this is what we can do. Let's do it together. You know, and I'm really excited. So shout out to the Plastic Warriors. They're all in the Bahamas right now, and some of them are also spread across the world. I'm not with them right now, which makes me really sad, but I carry them everywhere with me. So they live on my fridge because I'm always in my fridge um, every day. So, yeah, that's the one thing that keeps me going. So in summation, plastic, we need alternatives. You know, there's no need, there's no reason why in 2017, moving forward, that we need to be relying on fossil fuels and um, this, these non-renewable resources to create products that we use for such a short period of time and we just throw it away. 91% of all plastic produced globally is not recycled. You know, 79% um, percent of all the plastic that has been created to date sits in a landfill before it gets into our marine environment. 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic has been produced to date now, you know? And it's so crazy to believe that we're producing this, this product that has great uses, um, well, depending on what the use is, and it all just ends up in our oceans. It's horrible. So in summation, my thoughts on plastic, <sighs> it's time for a better product, all right? We do not need to be using non-renewable resources such as crude oil to make a product that we use for such a short period of time where we just toss it out and it ends up in our oceans where it harms marine life and also impacts our human health severely, you know? Um, plastic pollution itself, it's crazy, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of bad things happening to the ocean um, as a result of plastic. You know, it's infiltrating every ecosystem imaginable. Um, it's impacting so many marine organisms, um, so many birds and turtles and all these charismatic marine megafauna. It is so drastic and we need to do something. We need to turn the tide on plastic pollution. Yes, it is overwhelming. Yes, it is negative. But when I think solutions, I get excited because youth keep me going. And obviously youth can't make all the changes. These changes in, in regard to plastic pollution, there needs to be corporate social responsibility. There needs to be um, proper laws in place to really manage um, plastic pollution and remediate this issue. Um, yeah, so positivity gets me through it. Alternatives. Um, trying to be as sustainable as I can. Um, I'm human and I also live in a country that's very plastic positive and I'm trying to change that. Um, yeah, and 
positivity and optimism. It's the only thing. Positivity, optimism, collaboration, and listening. You know, not casting judgment on people that use plastic, but engaging in meaningful conversation and helping people to understand that we all had to start somewhere. You know, you know better, you do better. So enlightening others um, in a way that's inspirational and that doesn't make them feel attacked um, so that they can create better changes in their life um, in regard to plastic pollution. Um, man, I don't know if that was a, my thoughts or a rant, Woo! but those are my thoughts on plastic. Um, share your thoughts in the comment below. If you want to learn more about the Bahamas plastic movement, please like us on Instagram. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We have a YouTube channel. Go out there and you can on our channel and see some more content, learn more about our summer camp program, learn ways that you can create your own zero waste uh, approaches to life so you can learn how to make your own toothpaste or your own body scrub uh, to reduce microbeads. Um, you can also learn how to make your own reusable shopping bag from a t-shirt. Um, so there's a lot of content on there that you can check out. Also visit our website bahamasplasticmovement.org. Um, yeah and like and subscribe to Clarendon Road. It's amazing. Uh, special thank you again to Nicholas DeMarco giving us this platform. He is, I think he's 13. Um, or he may be 10. I don't know. Nick, I'm sorry. However old you are, you are you. And I think you're amazing. And I thank you so much for this platform and for inspiring so many other people. Uh, my next episode, should there be one, I promise I will be at a beach. Fingers crossed. Thanks so much for watching, guys.